the woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. I see the Bible, but it also says that a woman shall not voice her opinion in in the work in the fellowship. To keep quiet in the churches, yes, yes. it does say that, yes. So why are you asking me my opinion in the first place? Oppression maketh the wise man mad, man. I'm pissed to see oh, Israel from the crown of their head to the sole of their foot is sickle, sickle cell. Hated in prison cell, not only literally, but spiritually and mentally within the midst of hell. Seems like a mission failed, cause our sons are fainted. We become wolves in the neck, full of the pity of the Lord, cause we refuse to repent. We've been hit with every inch of the first in the chair, so we gon' be afflicted until we acknowledge our offense. Wisdom cried through the chief places of gathering through all of the places the Lord said that he scattered. Sister, do you go to church? Has the, have you ever heard any of this in church? Read it again. The book of verse John, chapter 3 and verse 4. When we're going over with the definition of sin, do you know what sin is? Uh, yes. What, what is it? What, what would you say it is? Sin is something that you know in your heart, mind, and soul to be wrong in the eyes of the Lord and continuing to do it even though you have knowledge of it being wrong for you. Okay, okay, you said a lot. Alright, so I'm gonna make it plain for you, okay? The Bible is gonna make it very plain to what for what sin is, okay? Go ahead. The book of first John, chapter three and verse four. Whosoever committed sin transgresses also the law. So whoever commits sin transgresses the law. What law? The laws of God that are written in this Bible, right? Go ahead. For sin is the transgression of the law. For sin is the breaking of God's commandments right and was that has that ever been taught to you have you ever been shown that in church the transgressions of the law yes the law the law that is written in the bible here let me make it plain for you i'm going to get you a simple law I'm get you a simple law that you may not know that you're in violation of go ahead deuteronomy 22 and verse 5 Bring it up. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. So this is a simple law that a lot of our people don't know that they're in breach of, right? Read it again from the top. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. So let me ask you a question. What is a woman's garment that a man should not be wearing? I see the Bible. I see some of the freestyle just, just from what I, not very, very, very approach. But it also says that a woman shall not voice her opinion in in the work in the fellowship to keep quiet in the churches yes, yes it does say that yes so why are you asking me my opinion in the first place well right now i'm trying to show you a simple law and commandment that you are in violation of i'm just asking you what a woman's garment is that a man should not wear i'm trying to make it plain to you you understand the bible said doesn't say that you cannot answer questions right it's saying that you can't approach men to teach men right good that we're gonna read it what's your name let's get that first corinthians what's your name just Samantha. Samantha, how you doing? I'm Officer Elijah. We're Israel United in Christ. We're sent to teach the lost tribes, the lost children of Israel, who they are according to the Bible. That's right. So guess what? Actually, give me, um, hold that. Give me Luke 14, 23. Let me show you why we're out here. Bring because you're right, and we're going to read it. In the congregation, the woman is to keep silent and ask questions to her Lord. But where are we at right now? Are we in the congregation right now? I think so. No, we're not. Let me show you where we at. Let's read that. The book of Luke, chapter 14, and verse 23. Bring it up. And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways. And go, whoa, whoa. Read slow. Strong. Where does the Lord say go? Go out into the highways and hedges. And do what? And compel them. You know what it means to compel them, Samantha? Meaning bring them in. 
talk to them, get them understanding, show them what they must do so they may come in and do what? And compel them to come in, uh -huh. that my house may be filled. That my house may be filled. We're trying to build up Israel. Right. But what if you break the law? What if you break the law? Let me show you. So, That's a good question. Inviting a transgender into the church. A transgender? You're a trans Is that okay for a transgender? Okay, let's see. Let's get uh, Ezekiel 18 to 30. Because, listen, we all have sinned, right? But what is our job to do? Isaiah 51 and 8. And 58 and 1. And then we're going to go to uh, what I called earlier. Yes, verse here, Isaiah 58. The book of Isaiah, chapter 58, verse 1. So, Samantha, pay close attention, right? Read. Cry aloud. Do what? Cry. Aloud. That's why we got the mic. That's why we speak loud, Samantha. Cry aloud. God commands us to do that. Spare not. Do what? Spare not. Read. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet. So we're not going to spare anybody's feelings. Read. And show my people. Show who? And show my people. Samantha, look at this sign. God says show my people. Read. Their transgression. Their what? Their transgression. Uh -huh. And the house of Jacob. Their sin. Their what? Their sin. So the brother just went over. What is sin? We're here to show you what your sin is. Then here's the job next. Go back to Ezekiel 18. Read. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 18 and verse 30. Uh -huh. Therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel. Samantha, before you leave today, you're going to know you're the house of Israel. That's who you belong to. Understand that. You can't be walking around here any other way like the other nations. You must keep God's commandments. Read. Everyone, according to his way, uh -huh. saith the Lord God, Read. repent. Do what? Repent. Do what? Repent. What's it mean to repent? We're going to break it down today. Read. And turn yourselves from all. And turn yourself. So, Samantha, we see you, boom, right? It says, we see you, we say, hey, sister, you in sin, right? The brother's bringing out Deuteronomy 22 and 5. The woman shall not wear that will pay taste to a man, right? It says, turn ye. Now you must say, okay, what do I do? I must stop doing that, turn myself to keep God's commandments. That's it. That's what we're here to do. Give me, uh, hold this. Give me Isaiah 30 and 20. Verse 20, and though the Lord give you the bread of adversity. So hold up. I want you to listen to this, sister. Samantha. It says, though the Lord give you the children of Israel. Look at this sign, right? What's your nationality? What's your, what, if you fill out a job application, right, what would you fill out? How was that black? Black, right? Your father's a black man? Guess what tribe you're from? You see that right there? That's the tribe of Judah. Right. That's right. That means the Lord's praise. Right. You know the word Jew? You ever heard the word Jew? Samantha, the word Jew is derived from the word Judah. Guess who else came from the tribe of Judah? Jesus Christ came from the tribe of Judah. Your king, your king came from the tribe of Judah. But guess what he's saying to the Israelites? Read verse 20. The book of Isaiah, chapter 30, verse 20. Uh -huh. And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity. Samantha, I can see that you have adversity in your life, Samantha. We all have had adversity in, the li in your life, right? Guess who's giving it to us? Read it again. And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity. That bread of adversity, you got to eat it. You know why? Because our forefathers broke the commandments. That's right. And the Lord put curses on us or adversity on us to bring us back to him. And I'm going to show you that. So whatever adversity you going through, guess what? Who's sending it your way? Read it again. And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity uh -huh. and the water of affliction, the water of affliction is tears. And the bread of affliction is going through, uh, the blood of adversity is going through trials, tribulations in your life, trouble, stress, uh, getting a job, uh, the husband treating you wrong, this and the third, right? And it all stems from us going away from the Father. Oh so that's what? Shows that God is in the earth today. What are you saying that? What we go through is because God is in the earth. We, yes, shall not thy teacher be removed into a court. Pay attention to the word of the Lord. My friend, yes, shall not thy teacher be removed into a court. He says, yes, thou thy 
That's what we're teaching out here. We come to the streets, right? You heard an ear behind you saying what? Say, this is the way. This is the way. What's the way? Give me, hold that. Give me Proverbs 623. What's the way? Sister Samantha. What's the way? What's the brother? What's the way? Behind Jesus. All right, brother, brother's bugging. All right, 6 and 23. The book of Proverbs, chapter 6, verse 23. Okay. For the commandment is a lamp. The commandment is the commandment is a lamp, read. And the law is light. Uh -huh. And reproofs of instruction are the way of life. Are the what? Are the way of life. The laws is the way of life. That's the way we must turn, Sister Samantha. Do you understand that? Go back. Go back. Wait. 21? Yes. Uh, yes. The book of Isaiah, chapter 30, verse 21. And thy ear shall hear a word behind thee, saying, This is the way. The commandments is the way, Samantha. Read. Walk ye in it. Do what? Walk ye in it. Read. When ye turn to the right hand, and when ye turn to the left. Walk ye in the commandments. First Timothy 2 and 9. Now I'm going to give you commandments you can walk in consist. This is something you can apply as soon as you can. Today. And that's going to show how you're walking in the spirit of Christ. All right, let's read this for the sister. The book of 1 Timothy, chapter 2 and verse 9. In like manner also, that woman adorned them. Read it slow. Read it slow. Samantha, you're a woman. This is for you, sis. In like manner also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. Modest apparel means to not draw any sexual attention to yourself. Right. So pants. Guess what? Pants show the curvature of your body. Like the brothers reading Deuteronomy 22 and 5. Pants show off your framework. Because Samantha, who's your frame? Who's your body for? Your it's for your husband. Right. It's for your husband. It's not for every man, like for all these men out here to lust after you. Bring do, it do you understand that? Hey, bro. Hey, do you understand that, sis? It's for your husband. It's not for me or any other man. It's for your husband, sis. All right. Um, now go to 2205. Do around me 2205. Bring it up. Because you know, a pants were instituted for the men, right? The pants were instituted for the men. And the women were supposed to wear what? Dresses, right? Dresses. And underneath the dress, you can have like uh, undergarments, like tights and spandex and all that, underneath the dress. Because spandex and all that, that was an underwear. That's right. That's not an uh, outer garment, right? Read. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22 and verse 5. Uh -huh. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Uh -huh. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. So I shouldn't be out here high, with high heels and a pump and a dress, right? I shouldn't be out here. But so also the woman should not be out here in what, Samantha? Pants. Pants. So remember, remember, remember what we said. All you have to do is now do what? Once you find out what sin is, what must you do now? Repent. Repent, which means what? Turn. Turn to the look. Hey, give the sister a hand. Give the sister a hand. That sister's paying attention. Give me, uh, give me First Corinthians uh, or Second Corinthians. Is it Second Corinthians eleven? The head cover? Uh, first Corinthians 11. Oh yeah, right, right above four, huh? Right above four. All right, out. check this out, sis. Now you didn't know this beforehand. We're here, we're, here, we're here to teach you today, all right? Brother Lee, stand by. You good, stand by. Now this goes for you too, Brother Lee. Uh, 11 and three. Bring it out. Yeah, 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 you know what I'm talking about. Um, so this is for you and him. So man, this is Brother Lee, by the way. This is Brother Lee right here. We know this brother. We're trying to bring him in. We're trying to bring him in, all right? And I want to read something to you, Brother Lee. Bring it out. Uh, yeah, read that. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 11, and verse 3. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. So the head of every man, meaning every Israelite man, black, Hispanic man, you are the Israelites, brother. You must wake up to God's commandments, brother. You black man with the maroon jacket on, your head is Jesus Christ. The black Messiah. Christ was a black man with white woolly hair. That is your head. Read. And the head of the woman is the man. So the head of the woman is the man. We're your head. We're your leader. We're your guide under Christ. We. That's and right. The, and the head of Christ is God. What? And the head of Christ is God. Even Christ has order. His Father, the Most High God.
God. What's his name? Yah, brother. Brother Yah. Brother Yah over here. The most high God. Right? Yahweh, if you will. Right? Yahweh Yah Shai is under Christ. Understand that. So we don't have no problem with the name. But understand that's the order. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 4. Uh -huh. Every man praying or prophesying. So we know the spirit of prophecy, Samantha and Lee. All about. All listening. The spirit of prophecy is when you open this Bible and you read it. Let's prove that. 19. Revelation 19. Let's show, let's prove what the spirit of prophecy is. It's anytime you open this Bible and you're speaking on Christ. Because remember, he is the word. He came in the volume of the book. Alright? Watch this. The book of Revelation, chapter 19, verse 10. Three. And I fell at his feet to worship him. So we're talking about Christ. I fell at his feet to worship him. This is the king of kings. Three. And he said unto me, See thou do it not? I am thy fellow servant. And of thy brethren that have a testimony of Jesus, worship God. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Is the spirit of prophecy the testimony? of Jesus Christ. So when you open this Bible, you're talking about Christ. So the spirit of prophecy is coming out of this Bible. Go back to 1 Corinthians. Read. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 4. Uh -huh. Every man praying or prophesying. So when the Bible is being read, being read to you, or you're reading it yourself. Right. Read. Having his head covered. Having what? Having his head covered. So if you're a man of Israel, a man of God, and your head is covered while the Bible is being read. Read. The sun read his head. Who's your head, Lee? Oh, oh time. Oh, uh, Christ. And Christ. Oh, forget about the Hey, bro, you all right. Bro. I'm telling you, you all right. You just, hey, listen, we just got to get something clear, but you all right. So, sister, now check this out. This is for you now. So this is the next time you open the Bible or you pray in the closet, you pray to the Most High God, right? This is what makes sure you got, so you're in order. So you're walking in order and not in disorder. Because think about it. Let's say you go up to a soda machine, right? It says out of the order, right? Nobody comes to fix it. Is it good for anything? Can you get any sodas out of there? No, you can't get no sodas out of a broke soda machine. So it's out of order. It's good for nothing. You might as well take it in the trash and you know, throw it away. That soda machine needs to repent. You understand what I'm saying? So you want to be in order. You want to be that working soda machine, right? So you want to walk in order, right? And I'm going to show you one step. So we got the dress code, the dress, right? Easy. Next one. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 5. With her head uncovered. So I said, you got the pure wool hair, like Christ. You know, he had woolly hair, right? No, it's a beautiful thing. Hey, I ain't got no more pure wool. I'm all down here now. You understand? So listen, it says praying or prophesying with what? With her head uncovered. With her head uncovered. Like you're in that right now. Your head is uncovered, right? Read. Dishonoreth her head. Who's our head? The man will be your head and going into Christ. So next time you read the Bible, it says, what should you have? A head covering on. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? These are these are uh, commandments you can implement in your life right away. The dress code. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.